All right, so welcome everybody. Jose J. Garcia with Garcia Mahome University. Uh, coaching series. So I was about to say, let's do deals. I'm ready for Tuesday, so, but it's not. It's not Tuesday. <laughs> so, uh, coaching series Sunday continue. We have moving mobile homes, which is huge for a lot of you. A lot of you people running away from them. After this call, you better be running to them. Hopefully, they're still there. And it may be because a lot of investors, as soon as they see must be moved, mm, it's not going to happen. So, but it will. But yeah, like I was saying, the shadow event was great. Great success on that. You know, pre-COVID, we were talking at one point doing two a month because we we're getting so big, so many people. We can't have so many people in one mobile home. That, that's just, you know, mobile homes are small. Double-wise, you know, you get a little bigger in that sense, but it's just, it's crowded very quickly. So, so we can't do that. But right now we are starting to pick up track again. Uh, we're thinking once a month. I, I don't think we're going to get to two a month just yet, but we are going to try to do every third Saturday of the month so for any of you who wants to join maybe some of you wants to retake that that's plenty fine um we we definitely will be doing that and i think that's uh the 17th for next month i haven't even looked at it just yet just kind of tossing it out there so that was good i like it that that's probably the shadow's probably one of my favorite coachings there's people around me everybody's like-minded thinking so easy to get the uh, encouraged and encouraged so all right i'm gonna get started so the most avoided Mobile home investing strategy, moving a mobile home, okay? Why? Because it involves more people. We don't know the steps. We lack education. I'm being real, okay? And we don't know how to approach it. So what do we do? We're not even going to bother with it. And that's okay. If you're getting started, you don't have funds, you want to start maybe with wholesale, maybe bird dog connector, that's plenty fine. But you know, there's levels that you have to graduate into and eventually you will be moving them. Some of you are already talking about owning a mobile home park. Well, if you do at one point, I'm sure that whether the city allows you to grow the park and have extra pads, or you just decide to bring more, more mobile homes onto the pads that are already there, maybe switching some of the old ones, whatever it may be, you will be moving mobile homes. So why not go ahead and get accustomed to learning how to do it? Um, it took me a while to get into moving mobile homes. I think I was the same way. Just, well, to me, I had so many deals, so many little single deals here, there, over. So it was like, I, I really didn't need it, but I did. But at the time I kept thinking, well, I just kept doing more of these deals. But at one point, you know, you keep doing something over and over. You can't help but to get good at it. And it starts to get just a little bit boring. There's no more challenge. Okay. It's another deal. Let me rehab it. Let me flip it. Let me turn it into a rental, rent the own. And that's awesome. Good profits, passive. But then what? And another one. And another one. So you have to progress. You start maybe as a bird dog, a wholesaler. You move up into maybe you start owning them and turning them into rentals. Then rent the owns. Maybe you finance and you flip them. All these things you're escalating to more and more. Then you want to get into owning the land, whether it's single parcels, maybe private land somewhere. And it has a mobile home, maybe two mobile homes. We see that quite often, but it's not in a park. So that's more on outside somewhere, outside skirts. That's also a great exit strategy. And I may make a call on that alone, packaging a mobile home with land, because that's huge. And the profits are very nice. So you get into that level there. And at that point, you own the dirt and you own the home. You can turn around and do the exact same thing we do in parks. But then at this point, you will continue to have the land where you can char charge a lot rent just like a park would. Then at one point, maybe go ahead and sell it. So you have options there back and forth. And then past that point, you know, you move into now parks. You want to start maybe selling parks, maybe connecting parks to the buyer, owner, that sort of thing. I'm going to mute everybody on here. If you have a question, just go ahead and mute yourself or drop a comment. Um, but eventually the goal is mobile home parks. I want to own mobile home parks. And so should you. So land owning it. Okay. You have enough land, enough, par enough parks, then you allow other investors to come in and do what we're doing. So, but yes, the most avoided exit strategy is moving mobile homes. You need a mover. You may need permits. You may need inspections. How far can that mobile home go? Can it come into the city? Questions, questions, questions. Just keep going around. Okay. We're going to try to shrink that as much as possible for you so that you know how to handle this. And most importantly, not come out of money. Because one thing that I keep hearing when I hear moving, moving a mobile home is always, well, do I have to pay for the move? How much is it? And I think a lot of a lot of investors think more so in the sense of I will fund the entire deal and then I will flip it. And it doesn't work that way. It, it shouldn't anyway. I mean, you can, you can do whatever you want. You can fund for it, move it, et cetera, and then come in and charge. I don't suggest that at all. Now, one thing to remember, and I always like to remind people is, regardless whether you're selling a product or a service, always have a buyer. You have to have a buyer no matter what. 
If you don't have a buyer and you lock up a property, regardless of the exit strategy, you will be scrambling when it's time to sell it. And when you're wholesaling, you don't want to be playing around with that. Uh oh, now I have five days left. Now three days. Now two. Now what? Now you don't cost somebody time because if it's a direct seller for one, and if it needs to be moved, that's even worse. It needs to be moved. People are expecting it. Maybe that land needs to be clear. And you're sitting there trying to find a buyer. That's not going to work. So find buyers first. And we'll talk a little bit more on that. And then go out and search for the for the uh, inventory. That's the way we do it. Always have a buyer, then a, then a inventory. So you see mobile homes must be moved. You know, the majority of the mobile homes that you see that must be moved are free. I don't know if you have seen it. Most of them are free or just get it off my property. You can have it. Uh, yes, I have titles. Uh, what are reasons? Why are there reasons why a mobile home needs to be moved? Land inheritance. We see that a lot. Especially, I had two people over the weekend, one younger lady. Uh, grandparents left her land. Uh, basically, she wants to build a house at one point or another, but she wants to get rid of the, rid of the mobile home. She clearly does not understand the value of the mobile home there, which is fine. She just wants to go. She doesn't like it, and according to her, it's ugly. Well, to me, that's just an opportunity. So that's fine. We're getting details on that. And the same way with her is she simply wants it gone. I have the titles for it. If y'all can just move it, it'll be plenty fine. That works for us. Bought land has mobile homes. We see that a lot as well. People buy land and they didn't realize that it was a mobile home, regardless single or double wide, but it's just there. And again, to them, it is ugly. They don't understand a mobile home. And again, that's fine. So another reason. Zoning changes every so often. We've seen this in the past where maybe once upon a time, a mobile home was allowed in a certain city, county, wherever area it may be. And when that zoning changes, guess what happens to that mobile home? It has to go. So therefore, it needs to be moved at that point. Get out of there from the area and put it in another one. Those of you that are trying to, trying to find where you can shove a mobile home, remember that you can't just find a piece of land and say, okay, I'm going to bring a single wide and a double wide or vice versa. You must first always check with the planning and zoning and see if they even allow mobile homes in that area. Rule of thumb, if you're driving by, you, whatever land it is, area parcels in, in those uh, areas that you're looking for, if you see mobile home after mobile home, then it's probably okay. But I will still check and make sure. This call can go into deep detail because we start getting into grandfather in and we start getting into switching them. A lot of times when you move a mobile home out of a mobile home park, it does not mean that you can bring another one in. So see, there's a lot of things that go hand in hand with it. But giving you reasons as to why somebody would need to move a mobile home, why they want to get rid of them, whether it's free, they're charging you some. Now, here's the thing about them is when people need need to move a mobile home, especially if the zoning has changed, they don't have an option that, you know, they were given a set amount of time for them to move it or they can not start getting fined. So I guess what these people are trying to do is just simply get rid of it. They may start at, OK, I want 10,000. Then 8,000, then 6,000. That is dropping because that time crunch is getting closer to the point where at one point, just please get it off my land before now I get fined. So, people who usually need to move a mobile home will give it away because they're usually in a time crunch or they have to move it. And that can be a very good role for you to um, negotiate, to negotiate with them, even if they have time to move it. One thing that I always toss out there to them is the expenses of moving a mobile home. You know, much like offering a X amount of money to, sell, to a direct seller, you have to always explain why you're offering what you're offering so that they don't think that you're just trying to beat them up. You're just trying to take my home. You're lowballing me, et cetera. I don't want them to feel that way. So you always want to explain your, your offer. And you should still get a no. That's right. You should always still get a no. Why? Because if you get an immediate yes, you offer too much. You've heard me say that. Okay. It, it plays out as negotiation. But when it comes to moving them, I always tell them, look, for single white is this, for a double white is that. So, you know, I'm able to come in. We can pick it up. We can clean the area after we are done, make sure it's, everything is unchecked. But this is about what it looks like. Get them to understand. And it is not cheap. So how much does it cost to move a mobile home? I can't answer for every state, every area. I can answer for the six states that we cover in the whole southeast. And on average, it's approximately about the same thing. Okay. 50 mile radius. Think about it that way. Any of you who might have heard somebody moved a mobile home three states away, that, that's not real. That's not true, or it was not done legally by no means. Okay. No mover wants to move a mobile home any further than they have to. What does that mean? Okay. When a mover, mobile home mover accepts the deal, I'm going to call it a deal. When they accept and move your mobile home, okay, they're also accepting responsibility. So when they hook up to that mobile home, 
and they start dragging it. It starts going down a highway, and now we're bumping. Now we're jumping, and it's rolling. And you have a late 70s going down a highway. One, if you drop them behind it, you want to might ease back some because that's an old box rolling down the highway. But if anything happens to that, and we've seen this happen, that mobile home just demolishes, just falls apart. That mover is responsible. They have insurance. They have everything they need. But that is a responsibility now on them. So a lot of movers will come to you and check out your mobile home you quotations want to move, and they'll tell you, I'm not moving this. Uh, I'm going to pass on this one. They may give you some runaround or something. It is usually because they see it as not something safe that they can transport. And they don't want to carry it any further than they have to through any more counties than they need to to get it to you. So always a suggestion to find the closest mover from point A to point B, but always keep it within a radius of 50 miles. After 50 miles, that is also a set number that a mover has, 50 miles. So after 50 miles, they can also get very expensive very quickly. I've seen some movers charge after 50 miles. It's uh, 30 to $50. I have not checked with them in a while, but 30 to $50 a mile. So add that up. Say you are moving at 100 miles. I've seen 100 miles. I've seen 150 miles. I, I don't think I've seen a whole lot more than that. But 50 miles times 30 or even $50 a mile, that's a big expense you have to, in addition, take. Okay? So, again, keep in mind, 50-mile radius, single wide, you're talking anywhere from two to 4,000. That is transportation alone. That is that mover coming over, hooking up to the mobile home, let's just say the one behind me. That's point A, carrying it over 50 miles, setting it down. All they're going to do is set it down, level it, strap it, and they're gone. You will still have an expense um, contract a handyman can do where utilities, the plumbing needs to be hooked up underneath, the skirting needs to be put on, and if you decide decking or porch, whatever you decide how to get into the mobile home, you will need that. That has to be put on, so that's an additional expense. All these things you have to allocate to see if anything is a good deal. And regardless if you're a wholesaler, let me toss this out. I'll always keep in mind that the better you understand the numbers, the better you can explain them to your end buyer. A lot of wholesalers have this thing about, well, I'm not the end buyer. I'm just the wholesaler. I don't need to know. Yes, you do need to know. Because if I'm your buyer, I'm going to be asking you all these things. And I expect an answer. Double whites, even more expensive, as you would imagine. A lot, a lot more work in intense. I mean, a double white is nothing more than two single whites put together. Think about it that way. It's always two single whites put together. When they go down the highway, they have to split them in half right down the middle. And they have to tape them up, put all kinds of stuff on them, secure them, make sure everything is good to go. They go inside, strap everything inside. See, a single white is a hook up and go. It's a lot simpler. A double white is a split right down the middle. Okay. Again, we can go into this call a lot more in depth. But if he, if the seller, the owner has done swap the the, the floor, for instance, okay, they have different type of flooring, then they are really cutting the house in half because that, that lumber is not meant to separate like what it was originally, which most like the particle board, which is trash. Yes, but just trying to give you an example here. So you split this mobile home in half, you take A side, deliver it, take B side, deliver it, and then they put them together. They have to level them. And that is, I've set and washed them and wow, it is work intensive. I mean, they just sit out there and just leveling, leveling all day until they get it equally flat. Then they can secure it. Same thing like they did with the single wide. Okay. Again, they take off. Now you got to find somebody to co connect the utilities, the plumbing, put the skirting, put the deck porches, whatever you decide to put on it at that point. So you see the expenses. A double wide on average, we see anywhere from eight to 10,000. A lot more money, a lot more expense. Think about that when you're thinking about investment. Do I want to invest on something that is going to take two to 4000 just to move it? That's got nothing to do with the mobile home. Now, let me toss one more thing at you. When you start moving, I don't care what year the mobile home it may be. When you start moving these mobile homes after they've been sitting for a few years, okay, you move it from point A to point B, things will tear up when it's going down the highway. Yes, it's meant to be mobile. But as it's going down the highway, you're hitting bumps, you're hitting those bridges, et cetera, and, and it's going to damage. If a mobile home got all the walls were replaced, it was rehab, and they was putting nothing but sheetrock on it. Sheetrock looks a lot nicer than all that panel crap you see in a mobile home, right? All those strips are gone. It is nice and flat, but sheetrock's not meant to be shook. So if your entire mobile home has sheetrock all around and it was beautiful, was, once it gets to point B, all that's going to be on the floor. Keep that in mind, okay? Do you want to move that mobile home? Is it worth it? I always say, if the numbers check out, go for it. 
some numbers may be crazy, but the resale may be great also. So it may be worth the move and damage that you're going to allocate from. Um, so how do you best invest in these homes? Okay, I'm not trying to scare none of y'all, by the way. This is, you know, it's a lot of things that go hand in hand. You just have to keep in mind on these, but treat them like a wholesale. Unless you're trying to buy, unless you have a piece of land yourself, unless you have a park on your own that you want to buy, and I don't know if there's any park owners on this call. I know we have some for Tuesday coming on, but then it would make sense to, okay, I want to buy a mobile home. You know, factories right now, uh, they are so backed up, and I know every mobile home park owner has a limitation as to how many homes they can buy, which means that they're buying a lot of these used mobile homes. It's always been the case, though, and if it's not a park owner, it's going to be a park manager. So a part manager or a direct uh, buyer who has a piece of land. We see, we get calls all the time as well. Hey, I bought a piece of land over in Atlanta. Let me use an example. And um, the city allowed me to bring a single wide. A lot of these people already do a lot of this work because that's what they want. So they tell me I can bring a single wide. Is there anything you have available? What is that? A buyer. That's a buyer. See, he needs a single wide. Now I know I got to go find a single wide. And I would always ask specifics. But if you're just getting into mobile home investing, especially, or if you're just graduating from wholesaler to you now you done flipped a few deals, you got a few rentals on your portfolio, whatever, it is time to move them. It is time to move some because this is part of business that you should all be doing as well. You never stop being a wholesaler. As a matter of fact, the more, the further that you go into mobile home investing business, the more of a wholesaler you will become. Okay. You cannot take every deal. You brand, market, and advertise, deals will keep pouring in. And I can't handle them all. That's why I started Let's Do Deals. So I got to give them to some of y'all. Um, but she, I would lock them up. The way I do it is we lock them up in an agreement. A wholesale, no different, A to B. A is the direct seller who is selling a mobile home. And B is who I decide to sell it. Okay. Only thing that would change on that agreement now from something that is going to stay in a park would be the day's amount. You will have a section on your wholesale agreement sheet. For those of you who attended the shadow events in the past, you have that form already. You would put 10, 15, 20 days, however many days you're going to give that seller or they give you to be able to move it. A lot of them are in a time crunch. Let me give you another tip on that. Mobile home movers, on average, are about two to four weeks out. That means that they have that much work going on. And if it rains, that's going to slow them down even more. So, if a, if a direct seller calls you, hey, you can have a mobile home. It's a 97, three bedroom, two baths, 16 by everything sounds beautiful, but I need to move by Friday and it happens to be Tuesday. That's not going to happen. There, there's no way you can, you're going to find a mover that you can even overpay because of how backed up their schedules are. And again, I can only talk for the six states that we cover, but it's pretty equal the way it works. So they're going to tell you, well, I can get to you in about two weeks. That's good numbers. I can get to you within about four weeks. I will try to haggle them a little bit at that point. If you can squeeze me in, maybe I can toss a little more something. You, know, you can always do that, but expect a minimum of two weeks. Anybody needs to move something sooner, simply get them to understand. Look, if it was up to me, I wouldn't move this thing right now, but I cannot. You know, I'm in a quotations mercy to the mover, and that's how long they take. And if they need to verify, I call the mover. It's, you know, they're going to tell them the same thing. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. Do not put yourself in a predicament where, okay, you signed it for six days and you don't even have a mover. You don't have a buyer. That's a disaster. That's what that is. Okay. Um, wholesale agreement form. The best way to find a buyer that I do is, okay. And again, I look for the buyer first and then I look, then I go for the inventory. But that does not mean that there's not inventory already out there many times and you have not found a buyer. That's fine. If, and I'm going to use Georgia as an example, that's where I'm at, okay? If somebody is giving away or selling a mobile home in, in Atlanta, in Atlanta, Georgia, they need to move, whatever it may be. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go locate mobile home parks within 50 miles, within 50 miles of that, um, of that home. See what I'm doing? I'm, I'm pinning the mobile home wherever it's located in the address, and I'm going to get a radius of about 50 miles. And I want to know every part name that is in those 50 miles. Because what I'm trying to do here is work a little backwards, yes. But I want to find out if any of them have any empty pads that they may need to use of a mobile home. See, what I'm doing is I'm trying to, I'm trying to create a seller here, a, a buyer. And many times if I find these uh, parks, uh, I may go drive through them. I may go drive and see how many pads. 
because a lot of times, you know, apartment have 10 pads, but if you call and ask, no, we don't need any mobile homes at this time. You have to get them to understand why they do need those mobile homes. I want to know what the lot rents are. I want to add them up in a year's time and I want to toss these numbers out them. If you talk, if you're talking to a direct uh, uh, park owner, they're definitely going to understand when you start talking, look, if y'all bring your mobile home into this pad that you charge 500, you know, Atlanta, that's about uh, 500 a pad, $500 a, a month, you know, in, in two months, in two months, you, that's a thousand dollars you're not making. What is that times a year? Most of you at the shadow event this Saturday realize that I'm not very good with math. I'm hoping one of y'all tell me what a year since. <laughs> uh, where is my chat? There it is. Okay, whatever that equals, let's just say 10,000 a year. They're missing out because they have an empty pad. And what they're having to do as well is they're having to pay taxes on those pads. You know, no different than owning any piece of land. So when you get to explain to them to look, I, I, I didn't think you got into business to lose money. You know, you were losing this amount and you start giving them these dollar amounts. These are things they don't want to hear, but they're hearing you out and realizing, okay, okay, I do need to fill my pads up. Well, what kind of inventory do you have? Do you have any mobile homes for sale? You got them where you want them at that point. Because at that point, you treat this mobile home like it is yours. 6000 thank you. 6000 uh, I like 10000 better. Uh, treat it like it's your home. You have it under contract, or you should have already put it under contract, right? Uh, gave yourself enough, enough days allocated for you to find a buyer. And then you start calling these up, call them, and get them to understand numbers. All you're going to do is mark up that home, whatever that market allows. OK, you get it for two thousand, you get it for free. If you get it for free, I mean, even if you resell it for a thousand, that's a thousand dollars. You can't go wrong with a free mobile home unless you can't do anything with it. So keep that in mind. The free one, some of you are probably already going back through Facebook trying to find some free ones. Send them to me. Let me help you with those. But so you connect with them, you get them to understand that. And then at that point, you know, you may be thinking, well, who is responsible for the movers? Who pays for that? The end buyer. Always. I do not pay for the transportation, not even half of it, deposit, none of the above. All I am is the seller in this case, the middleman, the wholesaler, right? So I am simply in control of a contract of an agreement that I'm handing over to them in a sense when it comes to the movers. And if you're dealing with the park owners, those are going to be easy anyway, easier, because most of them, when I've ever tried to get them a, a mover, they usually tell you immediately, oh, we already have a mover. And, and you can expect them to because them owning a park at one point, they had to move something out, move something in, even if it, whatever reasons. So they'll have a mover. That's also a good place for you all wondering where you can't find a mover. You know, a lot of you uh, have mentioned, well, 2,000, two to 4,000 for single wise, eight to 10,000 for double wise is not what I was told. I was told 8,000 for a single wide. That, that's too high. That is way too high. And you need to do your research, make sure that you're finding somebody that is affordable um, but I would also start by calling park owners or park managers offices and simply ask them, hey, I'm looking to move a mobile home in your area. And I figure y'all probably use mobile, mobile home movers. Is there anybody you can recommend? And they're always going to have numbers. Every park I've ever called, they give me two, three numbers. That's all I need. So, you know, that's a good way to get that and get a price. Because now if you're dealing with a direct buyer, you have a direct buyer who has a piece of land, they're going to know very little of anything. They don't know about a mover. They may not even know the prices of what to move a mobile home. They're going to be shocked. I can assure you that. But if they bought a piece of land to put a mobile home on it, you know, at one point they're going to have to make their decision and still cheaper than real estate, stick built anyway. So you have to explain to them what it's going to take. You're going to be a little bit more hands on with them because you may need to be the one that relates to the mover, get them all the information, et cetera. But again, the end buyer pays for the move. Typically, movers that we've used, uh, they expect half a front. And as soon as they sit the mobile home on a piece of land, wherever it's coming to, they expect the additional of the other half. So that's what we work with. I would never suggest paying somebody in full and definitely don't pay them anything without uh, nothing against them. But don't pay anybody anything without a contract and agreement. And they will get you that. They will give you a whole written agreement that I will move your mobile home on this date, their company, everything. It should have all the information. If they don't have that, I would ask that, or you got to put something on paper. Simple as that. Any questions so far? Okay. I do have a couple on the chat there. Talked about the finding buyers. You know, that's the first thing. And a lot of you, if you have not seen mobile homes for uh, mobile homes that need to be moved, you will. You start looking for them. Um, 
especially if you're looking for them directly on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Let Go. You go in and type in mobile home must be moved. You're going to get a lot, of people, a lot of people that are trying to move theirs. So what I would do again is get that radius and just start making you a buyer's list. Have your buyer's list you can have ready. You know, when you call these park uh, park managers, park owners, you call those offices and they are looking for you. Ask them, are you, know, are you looking to buy any, any, any mobile homes anytime soon? Uh, yeah, we are actually talking about getting a few here in the next couple months or so. Immediately get specifics. What are you looking for? Single wide, double wide, what year, what make, doesn't matter. Does it have to be a pitch roof? How soon can you buy? You know, get all these details because again, you are, you're building a buyer. And as soon as these homes start popping up, you know, you're going to want to go ahead and snatch them up, put them in an agreement, and then do your wholesale transaction over with the park management or park owner. Uh, I would suggest always, and I always do when it comes to brand and marketing advertisement, I mean, it's free. It, it is free Facebook marketplace. But I don't suggest just going and trying to find some of these that people are posting. A lot of times somebody may be buying a mobile home. They're not going to go post it on Facebook. They just don't care to do that. May, may not even use it that way. So what you need to do is I would go and post like something like a little dummy post on multiple pages. I will have mobile homes that can be moved to your land within the next couple of weeks. Anyone buying something that's simple. You will get comments. You will get DMs, messages. They will start coming in. And again, you're getting buyers. A lot of these, I call them off-market buyers. They didn't know that somebody was actually out there trying to sell a mobile home that could be moved. You know, most of these, y'all may run into a lot of these that uh, have to be moved. But people who uh, who want a mobile home for the land tend to run into the ones that can't be moved. So you got one of those kind of problems back and forth. So, you know, this is where you solve a problem. All right. Trying to think of what else to cover on that. I mean, we can go a lot more in detail on this, specifics, uh, permits if they're needed. If permits are needed, inspections, uh, those come from the city. Typically, it's not it's not so much trouble getting a mobile home out of a county, uh, out of a city. It's more so where it is going. That's where they're going to give you the trouble. Uh, they're going to require for titles. They're going to require make sure that the taxes are paid, and that's something that you need to do. No different than if you were buying an investment in a park. You want to call the city, the tax assessors, and make sure that that mobile home is indeed paid up to date. If uh, if it is not, technically, legally, you cannot move it. And if you do move it and you bring it into a new county with that title, as soon as you try to register it there or the end buyer, they're going to get hit with the flag of, hey, you owe four years worth of taxes. So you don't want that. You know, part of doing a due diligence, you know, as a wholesaler, always get all the information and treat it if it's, if it's going to be your deal. You know, a lot of people like to be a lot of this whole hands off. Well, it's not really for me. I'm just the middle guy. That does not matter. It one, it's your reputation is on the line there. But two, I mean, do right by any buyer because if you do, that same buyer can keep on coming back, coming back. We have two direct buyers that uh, that's all they do. They have multiple parks. They deal with multiple parks as well. And anytime I get a mobile home, I can simply call them. And the next day, they are there. They're there checking it out and they handle the move, handle everything. It has made it easy for myself. You can find buyers just like that. There's a lot of brokers that do a lot of this here. All they do is locate a mobile home per se from somebody. They connect to do the transaction. You know, the easier it gets for me, the better. So any questions? What's a bird dog? Um, similar as a wholesaler, just basically somebody who connects uh, you with the deal. You could come to me and say, hey, uh, the lady across the street from me is selling her mobile home. Uh, I can give you her phone number, her name. That's all I need. And then I'll pay you a referral for connecting me with her. That's basically what a bird dog is. Uh, okay. I didn't let some people in. My apologies. Okay, I'm trying to let y'all in. There we go. So any questions on that? Anybody have any, any mobile homes you've seen? You want to talk about that you might have seen need to be moved? We can try to walk through those a little bit here. I know at the shadow, a couple people mentioned those, and, and you're going to run into these here. So, again, always explain how much it takes. That's going to put a big difference in, in a, especially a direct seller, because most direct sellers, all they know is it has to be moved. They don't know the cost of anything. And when you tell them, hey, you know, it's going to take me 10000 just to move your mobile home. That doesn't, that's just to move the transportation. I still got to pay you X amount. When it gets there, I have to fix all the damages. 
I'll repair it. Uh, and a lot of them may not want to hear it, but hey, I'll let them know this is this is how it is. And this is why I can only offer what I can't offer. So get them to understand that. How much is a referral fee? Any referral fee or wholesale um, really is whatever you and the investor decide. So there's no specific number. Um, typically, when I pay referral fee, it could be anywhere from three to six hundred dollars. I mean, it just depends. Because as a bird dog, I don't expect you to do a whole lot of work other than just just give me the name, give me the number. I'll handle the, everything. And if you're coming in as a wholesaler, you would have already put that property on a contract, so you have the year, make, model, or you better. Uh, definitely location of the home and then what y'all agree to because all I'm doing at that point is agreeing to your terms that you have agreed with your seller. So it, that can be any number. Any other questions? No questions. Okay. All right. Uh, try to go a little slow there. I got a couple of answers for y'all. We got one new event that we just started. I'm happy, thrilled about it, actually. Something I've been trying to do for a while, um, but I couldn't get around to pay a whole $11. Y'all believe that? Meetup. Meetup, uh, we've taken over Mobile Home Mania. That was Michael King. He is an investor and friend of mine who has moved over into another state, not to share too much of his information, uh, but he's dealing with a whole new park that they bought, a whole park, so his hands are full, to say the least. He could not handle Mobile Home Mania, which is actually a live event that they used to do, and I will continue to do it every second Saturday of every month. The first one is July 10th. It's from 12 to 1.30 p.m. It's an hour and a half. I think it goes up to two sometimes, so a couple hours, a couple hours out of your Saturday that you can come in and network with mobile home investors just like all of us here. Uh, I'm definitely going to try to grow it a little bit more. I'm going to make, uh, and I don't know how many people on here are from there, but I'm not going to change a whole lot of anything this first month, maybe even the second one. I'm going to just kind of let it go, grow it, bring more people in, maybe bring guest speakers, that sort of thing. Uh, it is currently held at the Taco Mac in Buford, Georgia. That I may change pretty soon. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but I want something more like a conference, a little more entrepreneur environment kind of thing. So I don't know. Y'all give me all feedback on that in any of y'all. Everybody can join it. It's free. It's going to be free live coaching is really what it, what it comes down to. So we'll talk about different topics there. I will always bring a sheet full of deals for y'all to invest. You know, I'll bring that and take that everywhere with me. And I'm talking about Tuesday. Let's do deals. I have printouts of those things. So I come ready. Um, take action. You know, I can't stress that enough. There's so many people do so much coaching and they go back and they stick to the job. That is the worst thing you can do. Um, Saturday, we had one investor who purchased a few units, uh, a couple of them called me after the fact, one to invest in a couple of the units while they're in the area. It did rain. It was nasty. So not really anybody went out to look at a whole, any of them, I don't think, but these deals are available. The Let's Do Deals Tuesday. They're always there. You're getting your coaching. You're getting your education. All you need to do is engage and get ready. And some of these investors on here, I see a couple that job bought four or five units. So you know what I'm talking about. Take action. That's all I can say to that. If you need somebody to walk you, hold your hand, you know where to go, GarciaMHU.com. Tuesday will continue. At one point, I had announced that we might change it to Wednesday just because of how tight that's out in the field kind of day. We're out looking at inventory, trying to rush back to the office and put this into the system to present to y'all. It gets a little challenging. So, but we're not. We're not going to do that just yet. We're going to keep it keep it on Tuesdays for now and just keep it going. Sundays, of course, these calls will continue. I am going to ask that y'all send me some messages. Send me an email, j at garciamhu.com. I just realized it's not on my background this time, so I didn't put it on there. Uh, for the next call. The next call, I don't know what uh, what we're going to make it on. I was thinking, um, and we got many topics we can discuss, but I'm trying to kind of stay in some order, kind of progressing y'all here. But I was thinking maybe Q, I did think Q&A, just one large Q&A, any mobile home related question, but I opened the floor, none of y'all got questions. So I'm thinking that's going to be a very quiet call. We might not want to do that just yet. So give me some ideas. Next topic, uh, and Q&A is always available, of course. We always try to open the floor to all y'all. Um, we'll think of something. Wednesday, I usually put the announcement on, on all of our social media, what the topic is going to be about. Um, so send me something before then. I'll, I'll come up with something that. Along with that, I started also doing a quick fix videos. So every Tuesday when I'm out in the field looking at mobile homes, I try to find things that can be fixed very quickly, very affordably, trying to save you money. And those are about a two-minute videos that we upload on YouTube after the fact. The first one we made was on um, Windows, Windows, how to replace Windows. 
because if you don't do it and you try to do it right in the sense that's and replace the whole frame, you're talking a few hundred versus just the glass, you're talking about $20. So I know the next video is going to be on plumbing, how to fix an easy fix is plumbing. Uh, we'll talk about those. I may have my contractor there show you some of the material that they use. It'll be quick fixes. And then infestation, you know, that exists in mobile homes. I get attacked by fleas, maybe one out of every five houses. And I'm attracted to them, apparently. So they find me pretty quickly. So I, I, I'm going to make a video on that, how to get rid of those. No uh, pest controls, no four or $500 worth of bills. I've done all the above and I still had them. So I had to go on a different route and I found a very cheap uh, way to get rid of them and very quickly. So stay tuned for those videos as well. But again, suggestions, just send me messages. Hey, make a video on this. Hey, why don't you teach us about this? I got attacked last week. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people can walk through a mobile home and they don't jump on them at all. I, I don't understand what's the difference in or what, but I mean, if I, I even stand at the door, I can just see them, just my shoes. It is, ugh, gosh, gross, bad. We'll talk about that. All right. Any other questions before we go for the night? All right. Well, as always, thank you for joining me. I hope to see you all on Tuesday. Until then, thank you again.